Swainer Hardwoods. This is available through Home Depot's website. I'll put a link in the description below. So I'm working on a um, cutting board for a friend's birthday. This is walnut, mahogany, maple, purple heart, ooh, S4S, S4S. So they don't take a lot of work to get to the point where you can glue them up. Now, I do have a thickness planer. If you don't have uh, significant power tools, these boards are clean enough to where you can uh, sand them. And if you have a hand plane, there may be a couple spots that, that need a couple hits and you are co uh, cognizant or aware of if you have a little bit of bow in the boards that you're gonna join. You can work on that to the point where you can make this in about the same time as someone with power tools could. I do have some varying thicknesses here. This is uh, something that I did. Most of the boards that you get, that I got, uh, are gonna be pretty close to the same dimension. If your joints are not good, or your glue up is faulty, or uh, they, these get soaked too much on one side, yeah, they can crack, they can split, but that comes to taking care of your board correctly and trying to put it together with uh, good glue joints, so take some extra time in preparation now. Put down some paper to capture some of the glue and a little cardboard. You still want coverage from uh, all of the exposed wood on the edge. Now the tricky part about this glue up is uh, you're going to want to make sure you keep in mind the orientation of the boards. And at this point I'm going to flip them over as I begin to glue. That way I won't lose track and glue up the wrong face. Kind of where I want it. Again, moderate pressure. You don't want to crank it as hard as it goes because you'll squeeze every bit of glue out of the joint. And then uh, just using a wet rag, trying to work the glue down on at least this top surface. And uh, it did need some extra clamping pressure on the sides. Pretty happy with that. I do have these end pieces I use. They're a little short. Now the bottom is gonna be a different story. <laughs> so um, after about, oh, I don't know, an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your temperature, you can come in and flip this and try to scrape some of that. You can get under there right now. Uh, you can put the board on its side, but I kind of want the glue to set before I start messing with it too much. So, so got this out of the clamps. This is the bottom side, top side here. A little bit of thickness. My glue up was not 100% flat, but because it's still pretty flat, you can just run this through the thickness planer. You can use a belt sander. This is a pretty good unit. This Wen, it's like $40. I'll put a link to that. But this uh, paint scraper is really good for removing glue. Link in the description. It run through the thickness planer. I have a tiny bit of snipe that is a non-issue will come out during sanding. So I got this on a MDF board, pretty flat, and I don't have any rocking. So even though my glue up had a little bit of, this is the bottom of the board, this piece of maple had a, some of the pith or heartwood in it. Even though I had a funky glue up with different thicknesses and surface and mill down to the size, where the board became acceptable. Real nice, perfectly flat on both sides. So the next step here is to trim the edges. Video on this, but this jig is pretty square. It's just pieces of plywood with a hole cut out in the middle. So we'll get a little bit enough to uh, take this gap off and then flip it over with the same edge along the back fence. Using a round over bit, rounded the edges here, pass, and then I, I kept going. I thought I could get it a little bit better, and then I got a little bit of tear out there. But overall, pretty good. I mean, that kind of happens. Nothing some sanding can't fix. Went from 120, 220, and then a little bit of 320 and 400, and worked through the grits. 
Now I'm going to hit it with uh, a little bit of water on a rag, clean it up, raise the grain, and then come back and sand down the raised grain. That tear out that we had was on the bottom side of the board, and I just rounded it slowly with sanding. It took me oh about 40 minutes to sand everything. You can really get it just beautiful to where I, I can't stop touching this thing. It just feels these edges feel so smooth, and that's part of the thing with with the sanding process. I mean, I you really have control and you can sort of reform some of these corners if they get out of shape or out of line. You can sort of bring it back to a point, sand on this side, sand on this side, sand on the surfaces and it sort of reforms and you can control how it, it takes its shape. So this is where you see what it's gonna finish like as you start to put water on it that's what it's going to look like when it's finished you can see how much the maple and mahogany really really come alive and it's like a different board now really beautiful that purple heart so uh keep wiping this down get all the sanding crap off not here in this walnut that's kind of come exposed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit that with our buddy Starbond. The glue that we use, Type Bond 3, is supposed to be okay for uh, incidental food contact. Starting with the bottom up, got this knot filled, sanded it down a little bit, looking pretty good. I'm gonna be using this walrus oil, cutting board oil, original formula. And this is 100% uh, food safe, made in the USA. There'll be a link to these in the description. This is the High Falls Furniture Co. Uh, three quarter and these are really I think the best feet available they're like a silicone rubberized with a washer inside and they also give you some stainless steel screws pretty nice and then I'm also going to put a final coat of wood wax um, so I got the uh, cutting board oil got that put in and it's got a nice layer on it and I wiped away the excess. It's been drying now for about eight hours. So uh, came out real nice. You can see here where I patched with Starbond uh, the knot. That came out really excellent. I just measure from the corner and put a little pencil mark where I'm going to drill uh, small pilot holes for these screws and then put the screws in by hand. So I got these put in a couple notes here. Don't over tighten, just get them pretty snug. You can tear out the, uh, I mean, a stainless steel screw into wood. The, the stainless steel screw will win. Also, if you have issues with this board uh, not being flat, uh, one side tilts, you can add some stainless steel washers to any of the sides to uh, level it out. Morris oil. Wood wax, links in the description for this stuff. Just gonna get some on a rag and then just uh, apply it. This is a mix of beeswax and mineral oil. So you just get it on, let it dry and buff it, warm buff it, and it'll be done. This thing looks real, real nice. Got a nice protective layer that's not super oily. You can see some of the character in this maple. So, came out just perfect. Pretty simple. You know, uh, I think anyone can make one of these with basic tools. Thanks everyone for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it.